What's happening, YouTube? This is Jonathan Perry and TV Execution 10 here, coming at you guys with another YouTube video. Ask you guys if you have any comments, please leave a comment in the description below. So, the Yankees finally make a move before the trade deadline of July 31st. Late last night, the Yankees acquired the former Baltimore Orioles closer, Zach Britton, to join a already stacked bullpen that includes the likes of Veraldis Chapman, Dylan Batanzas, David Robertson, A.J. Cole, Adam Warren, Chad Green, Jonathan Holder, Jason Shreve. I have a feeling the Yankees have more moves to come. Um, kind of curious about this move. I know. Listen, I know Britain's there. Maybe the Yankees are, were, were scared other teams were going to get him, like the Red Sox or the Astros, perhaps, and it made sense. But did the Yankees really need another arm in the pen? Uh, interesting. Kind of interesting. You look at it in the way that Aaron Boone wants to shorten games even more, and I think it definitely makes sense. So you could have maybe, all you need now is your starter to definitely give you five innings. Maybe even four would be enough. And then you can just go to the pen to close it all out. The great thing with Britain is the Yankees get an extra arm now. And they have they don't have to keep rolling guys multiple days in a row. But I'm curious, though, still. I know Britain's got closer experience. Guy's got a power sinker. Very hard to put the ball in play against him, particularly in the air. So he will really... Force ground balls, which is something kind of Chin Ming Wong used to do. <coughs> Excuse me. As I said, something Chin Ming Wong used to do with, with throwing that heavy sinker. And Zach Britton's numbers were just completely insane over the past couple years uh, before he had the Achilles injury. And he's now beginning to kind of get back to the Britain we know with increased velocity and the ground ball rate's been going back up. So, I'm curious to see uh, how Britain's going to help the Yankees. I'm definitely going to say the Yankees are not done with them making any other moves. The great thing with this move, the Yankees didn't have to give up any big prospects. It didn't cost them like a Justice Sheffield or an Andujar or a Gleyber Torres. The Yankees aren't going to move any of them. They made it very clear. So, they'll send Dylan Tate, Cody Carroll, and uh, Lefty Rogers. I forgot his first name, but... These are, you know, Tate's like the big piece of that deal, but the rest of the two, they're not very uh, high-end prospects. So the Yankees didn't give up too much, and they wanted to just kind of clear up space in the farm via the Rule 5 draft, which I understand why the Yanks did this. Uh, they want to have, you know, what this now gives the Yankees, uh, if you're looking at it from a minor league perspective now, it, it allows them to put more, to get, the ma get major league help and get people to the 40-man roster, which is a... Very nice addition with why they got rid of, they parted with three prospects, as they did for Britain. But still, did it solve the Yankees' issues with getting a starter? As of now, no. One starter now just got off the market, and that's Nathan Avaldi, who the Yankees were going to face later today. But Nathan Avaldi now goes to the Red Sox. Kind of an, I mean, like, you know, I know if you're the Yankees, you didn't maybe want to take a, a risk with Evaldi because he, he didn't pitch that great with the Yankees. He wasn't, eh, blow me away and got injured before the Yanks dealt him. He came back just now from Tommy John not too long ago and seems to be kind of coming back with a bit something to prove, which I like. Red Sox, though, did get him, traded Jalen Beeks for him, so that'll be interesting, considering a lot of the Red Sox rotation is all left-handers. The only righty they had up to this point was Rick Porcello. So now you throw in Avaldi, so you wonder if maybe Drew Pomerantz is probably going to go, or maybe Brian Johnson, one of those two. But, but the Red Sox needed to get a starter, and they did. Now the Yankees have to make a move of their own, and they have to get a starter. Or are they going to do it in-house? Does that mean Justice Sheffield is going to come up? Can Luis Sessa step up today in his role? He's starting today. And now with Evaldi gone, the Rays are going to go back to that opener 
that opener BS that they like to go with. So Ryan Stanek's going to start instead now instead of Vivaldi. But as we're still about another week away from the end of the trade deadline, look for the Yankees to make that move for a starter. I'm curious who they're going to go after. It, unfortunately, this has not been a very strong starting pitching market this year. Uh, you know, Cole Hamels has not pitched well of late. Jay Happ, I mean, is he really somebody you want to risk signing here? I mean, yeah, he's familiar with the American League East, but is he somebody the Yankees really want? Not sure. You do have Chris Archer, but I don't know if the Rays are going to move him. Probably will, but I'm not sure. Bumgarner's not going anywhere now. The Giants are still in the in contention for at least a wild card. And then you have DeGrom and Wheeler, which Wheeler very likely is possibly to move, but the Mets I don't think are going to move DeGrom, and they're not going to send anybody to the Yanks. They're not going to do it. It's just, it's just never going to happen. So, if you're the Yankees, you have to look at it this way. You got Britain. I wonder if the reason why was not just because they needed another lefty. Are there concerns about Chapman's knee? If so, then this move made sense. Britain does have closer experience, as does Robertson. And you give yourself another lefty in the pen, which the Yankees now currently have three of right now. But one's going to probably have to go. It could be Shreve. I would think so. But I'm curious where the Yankees are going to go now having Britain. And how are they going to set up the bridge to, the, to Chapman or to whoever they close with? Because you already, have, you already have Robertson that can go at least the seventh inning. You have Batanzas for the eighth, and you have Chapman in the ninth. Do the Yankees want to mix and match? I mean, Britain doesn't mix and match. You don't use him just as a lefty specialist. Britain can go an inning or two. You, you easily can do that. So I'm curious where the Yankees will put Britain. I'm curious how the Yankees are going to go about games. The good thing this does for the Yanks now is it shortens the game up tremendously when you get into the Yankees' pen. Now your starters don't even have to go five. You can have... You could bring in Chad Green in the fifth inning. You could bring in Robertson in the fifth inning. You could bring in Warren early. It doesn't even matter anymore. So this will be a definitely uh, interesting move, and the Yankees have to figure out a starter because right now Severino's last few outings has not looked great. Tanaka did pitch a complete game last night, which is huge. Sessa, this is his chance to really step up. Sheffield, I'm curious if the Yanks will even bring him up at all. And then you have Sonny Gray, who's been a little up and down. Um, I know he's had, he's won his last two decisions, which is good. But when is Sonny Gray going to be the Sonny Gray that I remember from Oakland? <clears throat> and then, of course, the veteran CC Sabathia. Yankees are going to have to find somebody that can step up to the plate and be that starter they really, really need right now. Because until they find one, they're not catching Boston. You're just not going to catch Boston if you don't have starting pitching to keep up with them. Same thing with Houston. Each of them have at least two to three quality starting pitchers. Yankees need to find at least a second one. I'm wondering if maybe that could be Tanaka. Maybe he turned the corner with that game last night. We'll see. Second half of the season has begun. Some more trades are still to be made. Do the Yankees uh, go after a starter now, now that they got a reliever? Good for the Yankees now as Glaber Torres came back today. He'll be back in the lineup and batting fifth today. Gary Sanchez goes back on the DL. Well, it's been a tough year for him. Let's see where the Yankees go. Let's see where they're going to go 
let's see what they decide to do with only about six more days to go in the trade deadline. Execution 10, John Perriente, saying so long for now.